Welcome to the tutorial series of Structure Institute. Have you ever remembered all the modeling features in eTabs? Especially the techniques that will make your modeling faster? Let's face it, it's hard to remember all those features. In this tutorial, we'll focus only on selected techniques on how to model frame elements fast and accurate. Before we start, we need to select only the icons that we need. By right-clicking on the upper tab and unchecking the unnecessary commands. Accurate modeling is important in getting accurate results, which minimize program warnings and errors later on. Beams can snap to preferred points using the snap options and can be drawn in multiples. These beams can either have a continuous or pinned in fixity conditions. Usually, beam releases can be set as pinned condition as drawn or can be manually assigned with releases or partial fixity. The beams or girders usually has continuous end fixity with no releases, which takes care of the negative bending moments at the support. Likewise, Columns can be drawn with the correct orientation individually or by using a selection box to draw several columns at once. Let's get started. The purpose of using the snap options is to make your modeling accurate and fast. Since the click points will automatically snap to your pre-selected choices of snap to options. Here, we start by selecting the grid intersections and unchecking the unnecessary snapping options. When we select the draw beam command, we have options to choose for the property of the beam and the connectivity. Sections that are available in the list are those that are either default sections by eTabs or sections you have defined in the define command. A moment release as pinned, for example, is when you allow rotation about the major or the minor axis of the beam. In this case, we maintain it as continuous. Let us click the four corners of the grid lines. Observe that we have drawn the beams one by one. Now, if we opt to execute a faster way to draw those beams, we use the quick draw beams command. Notice how the beams are drawn by windowing around the base of these intersections. Notice how the selection box forms the outline which indicate on where these beams will be drawn. This is important as it serves as your guide. Beams will be drawn here on areas with grid lines. If there is a case that you need to draw several frames at a time, this icon is perfect for you. This is where we use the selection box. In drawing a selection box, you may start drawing your box anywhere as long as your desired grids are fully enclosed by the box. Frames will be drawn as shown. As you can see, I have selected 3D grid lines and the final output are frames drawn over the grids that I have selected. In an actual project, secondary beams are to be carried by the girders, which are part of the lateral moment resisting frames. To draw our beams at the midspan of the girders, we need to set up our snap options to midspan. If we are planning to draw 
at the center point of the carrier beam. Notice that the midpoint callout appears. In an actual project, secondary beams are to be carried by the girders which are part of the lateral moment resisting frames. To draw our beams at the midspan of the girders, we need to set up our snap options to midspan if we are planning to draw at the center point of the carrier beam. Notice that the midpoint callout appears. Note that when we draw a horizontal frame from left to right, a positive value of the offset distance will give you a final location of your frame above the reference line. For vertical frames, it will be from bottom to top. A positive value of the offset distance will give you a final location of the frame at the left side of your reference line. Now, if we opt to execute a faster way to draw multiple beams, we can use the quick draw beams command. You can even specify the number of beams to be drawn under direction either parallel to the global X or the global Y axis. Notice how the beams are drawn by windowing around the base of these intersections, which indicate on where these beams will be drawn. This is important as it serves as your guide. Beams will be drawn here on areas within these grid lines. To draw an arc using points, let us click the drop down arrow beside the line drawing type. And click arc by using three points. To do this, click any point in the model where you want your first endpoint of the arc. Then the second endpoint of the arc. Finally, click the third point between the first two points. The radius of the arc changes as you move the cursor perpendicular to the line. Now let us try to make an arc using the second method, which is arc by using center and two points. Change the line drawing type by clicking the drop down arrow beside the line drawing type. And click arc with center and two points. Click the first point of your arc. Your first point will be the reference center of your arc. Then click any two points that will serve as the two endpoints of your arc. The radius is automatically calculated based from the points that you have selected. To draw a column, you can either draw a single column or draw multiple columns at once, provided it intersects the grid line. Columns play a major role in the structural system of the structure as a main vertical member for the special moment resisting frame or SMRF. Ideally, 
columns are designed to satisfy the code prescribed strong column weak beam provision. This aims to maintain stability of the structure and would likely prevent successive collapse mechanism. The orientation of the column can be taken into consideration while modeling. This will orient the strong axis and the weak axis direction if and when columns are not squares or symmetric. Now let us try to draw columns in plan view. First, you click the draw column and then quick draw columns. Alternatively, you may look at your toolbar on the left side of your screen and look for the icon Quick Draw Columns in Plan. Clicking this icon will give us again a set of property options for columns that we are going to draw. Some of these properties are already discussed in the previous topics. Right now, we have two properties which are not present in our previous topic. We have angle and cardinal point. Basically, the angle property is for the orientation of your column. Unless edited, the orientation of your column in your plan view will be the same as how you've defined it in the define command. On the other hand, cardinal points will be the insertion points of your column. The default cardinal point location is always at the middle center. You may change the insertion point depending on the connectivity that you desire. Generally, insertion points at its middle center is a satisfactory assumption. In terms of stress concentrations from the structural members framing to it. It is also possible to draw multiple columns at one time by using a selection box. As you can see, I have selected four grid intersections, which gives an output of four frames lying over the grid intersections that I have selected. In structural modeling practice, ideally, we can draw the columns first, and then followed by the girders, and then the secondary beams in plan. So I think that's all for now. Welcome to Structure Institute. We have a new videos that will be coming up every week. Consider subscribing and I will see you in the upcoming videos.